Hey everyone, Josh Peck here from youtube.com slash Josh Peck Disclosure, also sharpeningreport.com. Uh, today we're talking about something a little different. I usually don't cover topics like this, not not because I have anything against them, just it hasn't really come up. But I got news a couple of days ago that, that kind of shocked me. I didn't see this coming. Uh, now, today we're going to be talking about, it, as I'm sure you probably were able to tell in the title, uh, we're going to be talking about an herb called Kratom that the DEA, um, effective in, in just about a month, uh, is going to make totally illegal across the U.S. And for a lot of people myself included, that is, uh, that's a really bad thing. And the, re the reason is because uh, Kratom is an all-natural herb that's used to uh, treat things like chronic pain, of which I suffer from. Um, now, it, it can also be used to uh, help with narcotic addiction, which I used to suffer from and don't anymore. Uh, so the, it has all sorts of uh, health benefits, and it, it has been completely legal up until uh, ju just the other day the DEA announced that they were going to uh, put it in the same category as heroin and stuff. Uh, so... I haven't gone public with my use of Kratom because up until now there was no real reason to, but people who follow my work and my channel know that I do suffer from chronic pain, and when asked uh, in an email or something, if, if somebody uh, in the past has asked me how I treat it, then I'll tell them, well, I take Kratom, and, and I explain to them what that is. So that's the topic of this interview, uh, or, well, conversation, it's not really an interview, but I, I have on my very good friend, Amy uh, Denise. Uh, Amy, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I, I'm doing good. A little, uh, a, a little upset about this news, but uh, but that's you know what we're here to talk about, and and we're uh, for the audience. Amy and I are, are are hoping to raise awareness for what this is and why it's important to so many uh, so many people across the country. Um, so I figured we could probably start, Amy, with your with your experience. Um, why is this? Well. well just as a quick introduction uh, for the audience to, to those who might not be familiar with you or your work, because um, you're, you're a researcher as, as, like I am. And, and so how, how did you get involved in this and, and what, what's, what's your, your story with, uh, with Kratom? Okay, sure. Um, I found out about it probably about four years ago from a friend who was doing some research just on natural alternative cures for various ailments. And so I've always been into that type of thing. I came off of um, prescription drugs about 11, 12 years ago. I used to be on lots of antidepressants. Uh, I struggled with OCD, depression, anxiety throughout my life. And so I was on all those pills, and then fortunately I got off of them at the age of 20. And so I'll be 32 this month, and so it's been great being off of all that. But um, I also struggle with... Um, Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disease. It attacks my thyroid. It makes me feel very sluggish and tired, hard time concentrating, brain fog as well. And so um, I don't like taking like stimulants or like coffee because it makes me feel even more anxious. And so when I heard about Kratom and how it was able to alleviate um, those type of symptoms where you just feel tired and forgetful all the time, I tried it and I didn't feel high at all. I, I liked that it was in the coffee family, but unlike coffee, it doesn't increase your heart rate. It doesn't make you feel restless. It just makes you feel actually really calm but stimulated at the same time. And the cool thing about Kratom is that if you take it in small amounts, it's more stimulating and energizing. But if you take it in larger amounts, then you can get the pain relief and the sleep relief. It's just very versatile. And um, I just started using it myself and just loved it. And I noticed that it was a lot more effective than antidepressants, too. I mean, when I take it... I just feel like a positive outlook on life and not that I'm trying to take something to make me happy but I like that that's an added bonus to the fact that I can also just get through the day because it is hard anyone out there who struggles with thyroid issues um, they know how everything just feels like so hard and I just love that this little you know I could take a little capsule of something that's completely natural and it helps me push through the day and so when I found out this morning um, through a family member who also takes it that they are going to phase it out and put it on the same level as heroin I was just shocked I knew it would happen one day but I was hoping they would be more statewide legislation legislation but now they're trying to do it on the federal level so fast and I was just like me 
it's not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it floored me too yeah. because as of right now, I think four or five U.S. states have made it illegal. But but by and large, it's it's legal, it's fine, and you know nobody nobody's really uh, on a government level up till now has has really you know had too much of a problem with it. But you know, I, I think a lot of what this comes down to is just ignorance. And I don't mean that people are stupid or anything, but it's it's if you don't know what it is. And I remember when I first heard of Kratom, uh, you know, a couple years ago uh, or a few years ago, I thought, well, that sounds a lot like pot. And I really don't <laughs> want anything to do with that. That sounds horrible. Um, and 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 just to, to make myself clear, I have no problem with medicinal marijuana. I do have a problem if somebody wants to take it to abuse it just to get high. I you know I, I I I'm not into that at all. But uh, and it's the same with it's the same with kratom. You know this isn't like a recreational drug. Of course there's going to be teenagers or people who are going to use. I remember I remember being a teenager when I used to be a drug addict, <laughs> and uh, I, I th there were all sorts of things I would try to get high off of. Um, so I I can see how people out there might try to use it that way. But I think once they do, they're disappointed because like you yeah. said i mean if you do get any kind of buzz off of it it's really fleeting and it, it's not anything it's not anything that i i get more of a buzz off of coffee like what you said oh, you know if i if i sure. yeah if i have a couple cup, cups of coffee i get way more buzz off that than uh than i ever have with kratom but um, and for those at home, if you're not familiar with what this is, like Amy uh, described earlier, it comes in capsule form or in powder form. It's basically just a, it's just a crushed up leaf, uh, but you don't smoke it. You know, if you do that, you, you're not going to get anything out of it. It'd be a waste. But you, you basically, you make tea out of it, or uh, you, you can mix it in yogurt or, or something, uh, or you just take it in capsules. That's what I do. I just take capsules. Yeah. Um, I take about five of those a day, and that gets me through the day. Uh, so my, my, my experience with it, for, for those at home, is uh, I, I've, I have a rare degenerative bone disease, and I've had it all my life, but in about my 20s, uh, I started really having a lot of problems with it, and to the point where I had to stop working. Um, and eventually, I even needed a hip replacement and, and lots, lots of other problems. On top of that, I also have this mystery illness. And uh, Christina, my, my wife Christina and I, we've been to doctors and there's just no answers yet we don't know what this is but it started it started years ago probably about 10 years ago where my feet would just hurt all the time both of my feet um, and the thing that the, the reason that this isn't the the bone disease is because that it, it's called trevor's disease that's what i have it only affects the right side so my right hip right knee and right ankle i i have it in in all three of those but it's only on the right side so it has it's not that it's something else but uh it started my feet would really hurt then uh, lately, the past four or five years, it's been in my hands to where my mm -hmm. hands will hurt, um, especially if it rains, it'll get worse. Uh, so there's there's strange triggers like that, but it's just constant chronic pain all the time. Sometimes it's worse. Sometimes uh, some days are better than others, but it's always there. Um, now, I had I had a big time narcotic addiction years ago because I was prescribed uh, at first Vicodin for my bone disease. After a while, that stopped working because with narcotics, if you keep taking them, you're going to develop a tolerance. Uh, so they took me off Vicodin, put me on morphine for a while. That stopped working after a while. Then they put me on uh, oxycodone, which that sort of is like heroin. That That's that's like the, the most uh, powerful narcotic you can get. And, and I was on the highest, uh, at, at that time, the highest milligram dosage that was allowed to even be pre prescribed. So I was taking 80 yeah. milligram pills of that all the time. Mm -hmm. And it it, it it about ruined my life. My I, I, I like you, I, I was really sluggish and uh, I I had no motivation. I was super depressed. Um, anytime I felt anything, it was anxiety. Uh, that was like the only real feeling I had was anxiety. And it, it was it was awful. The narcotics ruined me physically, emotionally, and even spiritually. Um, so there just came a time in my life where for the good of 
myself and my family, I had to stop taking narcotics. And this was before I knew about Kratom. Uh, I didn't know I didn't know about Kratom at all and that people actually use Kratom to help get off of narcotics. And I wish I would have known at the time, but, uh, you know, I believe that there's a reason for everything. So I, I, I didn't know when I stopped uh, oxycodone cold turkey which yeah. was the most hellish week it, it, for a whole week of my life. It was It's worse than pain. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a sickness that's worse than nausea. Anybody who's ever been through, like, heroin uh, withdrawal or, or, or prescription, you know, painkiller withdrawal uh, up to that level uh, probably will know what I'm talking about. It's You can't you can't describe it. It's worse than pain. I, I'd rather be tortured than have to go through that. It's really bad. Uh, so it was the worst week of my life, but eventually I got off of it. And uh, once I was clean, all the pain started coming back. And that, that's the thing about narcotics, too, is, is the pain was always there. It's just narcotics make you so high that you kind of don't think about it as much. It's easier to ignore. Whereas something like Kratom, it actually does take the pain away because it works differently than, than narcotics do. Uh, but anyway, so... Uh, all that pain started flooding back, and I started researching online. My wife and I both started researching online about natural alternatives, non-addictive and non-habit-forming alternatives to uh, for pain relief. And that's when I found Kratom, and that changed my life. I've I've been able I can actually work now. I can play with my kids. You know, I'm not I'm not just just in pain and miserable all 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 the time. So the past couple of years have been really productive and and really good. So. Uh, yeah, I got a text from a friend a couple days ago who also who also takes Kratom, um, and he he sent me a link that said that the DEA was was putting it in the same category as heroin and ecstasy and all these really bad things, which is ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> and and that and I've had to that that's the thing with the withdrawals too. I've had to stop taking Kratom before just because either I, you know, I just forget to order it or, you know, it's not, right. it's not a habit. So there are times that I just forget to take it. Mm -hmm. But then when the pain comes back, you know, I'll remember. But there, Kratom withdrawals, there's, you can stop taking it and it's fine. Like, yeah. I, 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 I didn't, I don't know if you've ever had to just stop taking it, but I okay. didn't really, I didn't really have any, any problems, like any uh, withdrawal symptoms from that. No, me either. When I moved moved to Uruguay for 15 months. They, I wasn't able to get it there, and while I lived there, I was off of it completely, and I never experienced cravings, withdrawals, nothing. So getting off coffee was like 10 times harder than getting off Kratom, and that's the irony of the situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. And, and yeah, I mean, coffee is way more addicting than, uh, than I've ever known Kratom to be, and, uh, you know, like I said, I've been taking this every day for, you know, a couple of years, except for, mm -hmm. you, you know, a few days here and there where I didn't have it for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, there were no withdrawals or anything. The only thing that happens is all of my chronic pain comes back and it's hard to, you know, cause then I'm just in pain all the time. So it's hard to do anything. Um, now I know if, at least for me, and I'm asking people out there to, you know, pray for me and pray for Amy and pray for anybody else who is using this to treat their chronic pain, because if they go through with this, which it's looking like they, they want to, the, the DEA wants to. It's going to be a really rough time for a lot of people, uh, and a lot a lot of people out there even more so than than us. Um, now there is a petition going around. Uh, I I can't say for sure that it's going to have any effect, but I know that it definitely won't have an effect if people don't sign. So in the description uh, below this video, there's a link. Uh, please sign this petition to try to stop them from making this uh, making this illegal. Um, because, like I said, there are a lot of uh, a lot of people, a lot of families that really do depend, not in a drug addict way, but just in a functioning way that depend on this, like like any other like any other medicine. Um, j just as somebody who's suffering from diabetes would, you know, depend on insulin or something. It's it's we we depend on kratom if you know if there are people that know about it at least just to be able to get through the day and function. So, um, well, we, we were able to find a couple of articles. Uh, I know I know you, you had a couple, so I'll, I'll let you go yeah. first, and then uh, I want to read this one from, from Forbes magazine uh, that talks about this a little bit more. But, um, but yeah, you, you, you've dealt more with the all-natural health alternatives mm -hmm. than I have. My wife is really into that stuff, too, which is actually she's the one that, that found – found out about this for me so uh, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go first and uh, I'll let you handle that. Okay. 
Yeah, I just wanted to go over um, 10 like positive effects of Kratom just so you guys can understand who are listening because, you know, probably like me and Josh, you haven't heard of this plant and so here you are wondering what it's all about and I know there's a lot of ignorance out there so I just wanted to put this out there. Um, number one, like I said earlier, it's stimulatory in small amounts. It's energizing like a cup of caffeinated tea or coffee. Um, the energy produced is not correlated with restlessness or an increase in heart rate. Um, most reports describe it as a cerebral energy where you feel like your mind is clearer, you experience deep focus, and you have a balanced sense of vigor and vitality. Um, number two, it's mood boosting. It's very uplifting to your mood and cognitive state. Um, another effect of the plan is it can cause you to feel a sense of deep contentment and well-being. Just one dosing per day can block out negative thoughts and, and put you in an optimistic frame of mind where anything um, seems possible. Where you know before, like if you're in pain or you're in depression, it just seems like too much, and then you can take this, and it just feels like you can get through the day. Um, and just from my past research on this plant, I know that. It it originates from Asia, and that's where they used to chew the leaves while they were working just to get through the day. So that's kind of how it started. Um, another one is it enhances concentration. So this is a great alternative for people who are in Adderall or things like ADD, ADHD symptoms. Um, Adderall is just not healthy at all. It's like three molecules kills away from meth and so I always used to encourage people you know get off the Adderall get off all these stimulants and try the Kratom and so yeah it definitely enhances your concentration and helps you sit in class and study as well um, another one is it's a potent relaxant when you use larger doses um, it produces more of a, a sedative effect it supports positive mood it calms you down and it helps you get rid of stressful thoughts uh, it also helps with nervousness and physical tension um, five, which is really important, is the pain reduction. Um, it's a great effective alternative to harsh prescription pain meds. Um, it, it just works like morphine to relieve temporary or chronic pain. Um, it helps with migraines, arthritic pain, vascular pain, muscle pain, chronic pain. It's just a really safe and much less addictive um, form of pain relief than what you would get prescribed by doctors. Um, another one that me and your wife actually talked about was that it improves sleep. Another favorite effect of Kratom is that it's one of the best uh, natural herbs for improving sleep quality. It can serve to shut off your mind before going to bed and put you into a restful state, which makes it easier to fall asleep. So it's great for people who are trying to get off sleeping um, pills, which are really dangerous as well. Um, another one is it can heighten uh, social ability for people who have anxiety, social anxiety. It can just make you feel more social, eliminate anxiety when meeting strangers or being around large groups of people, which is good for people like me and others who have struggled with anxiety throughout their life and don't want to be on prescription anti-anxiety pills. Um, oh, another important one is it eases opiate withdrawal. Um, I've actually helped. Um, a family member who was on Oxycontin just like you were and he was using it for his pain. He has um, he has a his 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 arms are stuck like this and so he has all this tension and the only thing that would help him was getting on the oxys and when I was around him I could tell he was becoming dependent and starting to abuse them and so I told him about Kratom and I'm sure he was a bit skeptical Cool. Are you sure this is going to work? And I said, yes. And he's been on it for years now, and he's been away from the oxys. So I'm just, I'm really more bummed out about those types, like, you know, that are on the oxys and are moving toward that if they were to not be able to get their kratom. So it's definitely really good for easing uh, withdrawals of heroin, oxycotton. Um, and so just a really big bummer. And then the last one was it, oh, it promotes overall health. Um, it's been used for hundreds of years by Southeast Asian cultures as a medicinal herb. Um, these populations have identified a variety of general health benefits associated with Kratom. It's a powerful antioxidant. It's been found to reduce neuron damage following strokes. It also lowers blood pressure, and it naturally contains an alkaloid commonly used in hypertension uh, medicines. Um, it also contains catechin, which is said to mimic insulin and and control blood sugar levels for diabetics and other effects is it includes antiviral and antibacterial properties that can boost your immune system and it also has been um, found to promote weight loss and improve athleticism by increasing energy metabolism so those are just you know some really positive benefits of this plant that I just wanted to go over really quick 
Awesome. Yeah, and, and that that was something I forgot to mention too was the the help with sleep because before before I was taking kratom for my pain, I, I didn't know that it, it could even help with sleep because I used to uh, I I've, I've never been able to sleep really well until I, I started taking kratom. But what I would um, what I would do is I would take like over the counter sleep aid at night and then drink Monster Energy drinks throughout the day because yeah. a lot of that over the counter stuff it it just knocks you out and it's not a good like restful sleep it just basically just makes you unconscious and then you have to deal with the uh deal with the after effects the next day and it it was if i kept going on with that i was starting to have like heart pains and stuff Mm -hmm. and it would have it i it eventually would have killed me um but with uh with kratom i get restful sleep every night i'm actually able to get up in the morning with my kids and you know get them off to school which is i i've never been even when i was a kid i've never been a morning person but but i am now it's nice (laughs) um Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, if it's if there's a day where I forget to take it or don't take it, I I can mm-hmm. still until my chronic pain comes back, I can still function throughout the day. There's no withdrawal right. symptoms. Um, now, of course, there are people out there that abuse it, and this is uh, I, I want to read this this article, but uh, there's a statistic in this article that I thought was it's not exactly funny, but it's 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 just ridiculous, is what it is. Mm-hmm. The 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 uh, and I I'll read it again once I read the article. But it, it says here as an example of the risks of kratom, the DEA cites a CDC study published this summer that counted 660 poison control calls during a five year year period from 2010 to 2015. Uh, also, people keep in mind there are 320 million people in the country. But uh, okay, so 660 calls in five years now to per to put that in perspective uh poison control centers received 6,843 reports of of young children ingesting single load laundry pods in just the first seven months of 2016 so and that's just that's just in kids you know and that's that's one thing so what are we going to start banning uh those, those single load laundry pods it's just it's so ridiculous that they would even use that like as a reason like there are other there are other reasons they could give uh mm-hmm. but anyway i want to th- so this is from forbes um people can check this out this was just written actually i think today uh dea argues that public comment is unnecessary before kratom banned uh People with substance dependence issues or chronic pain were dealt a blow yesterday when the DEA announced their intent to effectively ban the medicinal chemicals pre- present in the plant uh, Mitra, Mitragyna speciosa or Kratom. Uh, Chuck Rosenberg, acting administrator of the DEA, claims the action is necessary to avoid an imminent hazard to the public safety. As an example of the risks of Kratom, the DEA cites a CDC study published this summer that counted... 660 poison control calls during a five-year period from 2010 to 2015 on behalf of people suffering uh, toward uh, reactions to the herb or teas made from the plant material. Um, the, the relative magnitude of this hazard to public safety has been called into question by Kratom users and commenters here at Forbes. To put Kratom risks in perspective, poison control centers received 6,843 reports of young children ingesting single-load laundry pods in just the first seven months of 2016. And I would imagine probably similar numbers or even more with just Advil or Tylenol or stuff oh, like that. Of course. Yeah. Uh, Okay, go. so continuing on, when I first wrote about Kratom for another publication earlier this summer, I had assumed that it was primarily used for recre- recreational purposes because it has mild self-limiting effects on o- opioid receptors. To my surprise, more than three-quarters of reader comments at Forbes and on my Twitter and Facebook feeds are from people who've been using Kratom to relieve chronic pain, clinical anxiety and depression, and in recovery from opioid and alcohol dependence. I'm truly fascinated by these testimonials, despite the effects not being quantified in a controlled clinical trial. Uh, Very recent work from researchers at Columbia University and Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center have revealed that the the alkaloids in Kratom have modest but distinctive effects on opioid receptors by selectively activating selectively activating beneficial pathways over those that cause the majority of opioid side effects so it works in a, it works in a different way a, a more beneficial way to the the brain and body these test tube and animal studies require further confirmation in clinical studies 
But my reading of the DEA's notice of intent as published today in the Federal Register reveals that these accounts and the recently published data were not among the considerations leading to the temporary replacement of mitragynine and the 7-hydroxymitragynine uh, onto Schedule 1, uh, Schedule 1 of the U.S. Controlled Substances Act. Uh, and again, for those at home, Schedule 1, that's that's what like heroin and ecstasy and things like that are, are in. Um, all right, so continuing on, but since this ruling will not take effect for 30 days, September 30th, 2016, one would think that the agency would implement a public and scientific comment period and field the concerns of those who are blindsided by the announcement. Well, that's probably not going to happen. Near the end of the Federal Register publication is this section on regulatory uh, matters. And it, it's kind of long. I'll just read the highlighted part here, but people can uh, look this up on their own. But it says, uh, so th this is from the actual Federal Register publication. It says, uh, the administrator finds that there is good cause to forego the notice and comment requirements of Section 553 as any further delays in the process for issuance of temporary scheduling orders would be impractical and contrary contrary to the public interest in view of the manifest urgency to avoid an imminent health ha or an imminent, imminent hazard to the to the public safety to the contrary an objective examination of the 100 plus comments i've received here at forbes tells me that foregoing the notice and comment requirements is in direct opposition to the public interest i of course agree uh, at the very least there uh, it's an imbalance between the alleged risks of kratom and the anecdotal benefits of the herb in fact banning kratom may cause more damage than leaving it as is uh, bought and used as a botanical tea in my next article i'll speak with kratom users and the academic scientists who are revealing how the bioactive compounds in kratom contrast from strong highly addictive opioids so people at home should check that out uh, again it's it's on forbes it's a forbes article but yeah, so I mean, e e even people, you know, e even people writing for for Forbes are are realizing just how ridiculous this is. So I, I'm curious of of your opinion, Amy. Why why do you think I just for me I don't really buy that it's an imminent health hazard and we got to get rid of this stuff now because there's just no evidence. I mean, 660 calls to a poison control over five years. I mean, that's that's almost nothing. Uh, what what yeah. do you think the real reason behind it is? Um, I think that as we go further and further into this way that our country is headed, that it's just going to get to a point where all health, um, like alternative healing is going to be phased out because it's cutting into their profit margin with big pharma, antidepressants, anti-anxiety, pain meds. It's like they want people to go back on the Suboxone and the Methadone, and I think they're, they're losing a lot of customers right now because of Kratom. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you because I think a lot of people, um, a lot of people are going to have to face this this horrible decision of either do I want to be in chronic pain forever or do I want to get back on narcotics? Uh, as for myself, I will do anything to not get back on narcotics. I won't. I, I don't care if I have to live every day in pain. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, so if this goes through, you know, I'll have to find some other option and I, I, as far as right now I don't know of any so I, I and I've, I've tried other things that claim to have pain relieving uh, benefits and I, I just haven't found anything that actually works as well as as Kratom does um, because with a lot of that stuff and I'm not saying all of it I am totally an advocate for for all healthy living and and you know getting off of pharmaceuticals and stuff like that uh, but there there are there are unfortunately other companies even even in the all natural movement who will try to sell things that aren't even what they're claiming and you know there have been stories on that like certain uh, certain botanical uh, websites and things will say that something's but but then when they taste it or when they test it it's actually like green tea or something and right. and uh, you know people are having uh, psychosomatic results you know thinking that it's helping this is not like that because i know 
I know I completely understand like the want and the belief for something to work and almost getting to the point where you can believe that it does even when it's not because uh, like for example and this is just me some people have taken this and, and and it has worked for their depression but when I was going through re- like clinical depression I heard that St. John's Ward is supposed to be good for that and I tried it and it didn't help it just it didn't and I'm not saying that it doesn't help people I'm sure that it does but at, you know at least it didn't for me so this is completely unlike that you can't uh, th- this is something where you can't psychosomatically think that it's working, but it's really doing nothing for you. It actually does work, and there's actual science behind that. Um, so I, I, but but again, for those at home, you know, please, even if you're not a sufferer of chronic pain or don't know anybody that is, please sign this petition because it, it, the way that I'm looking, you know, I, I'm. I have to assume there are probably people that are going to watch this who aren't Christian, and that's fine. I, I, I am a Christian, and you know that's that's okay. People, we can be different. Um, but for me, my belief is I'm going to have to stand before God someday and give account of things that I've done, and I want to be able to tell Him that in this case I, I at least tried to do something. You know, e- even though. You know, I, I for for those out here who do, who just have no idea who I am, I work in television and media and stuff, so I'm 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 out there, and it it's a little bit of a risk for me to kind of come out with this. I mean, I don't anticipate any major problems, but with this kind of stuff, it's controversial, so you just never really know. Uh, but I I want to be able to stand before God and tell Him that, in the, at least in this situation, I tried not only for myself but for the millions of other people. Uh, in, in the country who suffer from, who suffer with chronic pain every day, and whose lives will be worse off if this is, if and when this is made uh, illegal. Um, so I, I, I wanted to ask you, do you, do you have a contingency plan? What, what are your plans if this, if this goes through and it's illegal? Have you had, have you had time to give any thought to what you will do or, and, and what, and what? Beyond, you know, obviously beyond your own your own personal needs, what what's your motivation for wanting to block this from from getting passed? Yeah, I have already. I emailed um, a supplier and asked them, like, you know, what happens if I was to buy an amount of kratom now to just, you know, d- to divide it up between my family because it's obviously cheaper to buy in bulk powder or whatever and make your own capsules. And so I was asking them, like, what happens if I do have some left over after? you know, this September 30th deadline, like what happens? Because if you're going to get in trouble, I mean, it's just not something I want to play around with. I don't want to mess around with. And they need to be giving us uh, clear instructions about like what this means for us. Because so far, I mean, I'm just not getting much explanation other than September 30th, it's going to be illegal and you can no longer buy it. And so some people are wondering like, can I buy a lot now? Can I stock up? And that's the problem is like they're not giving us information. And so I feel like we're just watching kind of a historical thing go down that reminds me of the whole cannabis craziness, you know, where before, you know, 1930, it was prescribed for so many medicinal things. And then suddenly the government came in and just decided that, no, there's no therapeutic or medicinal value. It's now illegal. It's Schedule 1. It's it's the devil, basically. And then, you know, through propaganda and brainwashing, slowly society has even begun to accept that. You know, and so it's just really sad that one day, who knows, people are going to look back on Kratom and, and think it has no medicinal value, which is what they're saying right now, and it never helped anybody. It's just a bunch of people trying to use an excuse to get high, and it's just ridiculous. I mean, you can tell me and you are sober-minded. We care about the kingdom of God. We care about people. We're not trying to get high. We're not trying to push a drug. But I know family members who are in chronic pain and who have stopped using prescriptions, and they've been using this and I worry more for them I mean it's hard for me to get going with you know my autoimmune and just my sluggishness but I can't imagine like you guys living in that chronic pain or coming out of withdrawals of you know the type of things that the doctors would give you so that's where my heart is breaking and I've also even helped a friend get off heroin by sending him some kratom I ordered some and had it sent to his house and he was able to get off the heroin with it and so that's just why I'm so focused on this right now. I'm just trying to, I'm in research mode. I'm trying to figure out like who I need to contact, 
what what we can do in the meantime. Um, it just they say they're going to put it on Schedule One status and just review it for a couple years, and then maybe they'll take it off. It could be temporary, but you know when you look back on their track record, it's not really that good to think about. Like, are they really going to take it back off? Are they really going to study this? Because it seems like they're being really hasty right now, rushing it to put it even above amphetamine. You look at amphetamine, which is Schedule Two drug, and then you're going to put kratom, something in the coffee family. You know, at Schedule One, it just blows my mind. So. I don't know. I'm going to be praying a lot. Yeah, me too. And that that's I think that's the most important thing that we can do is is keep this whole situation in in prayer and and yeah, I mean, you know, like you said because we are Christians, you know, we hold to biblical principles and one of the one of the a, a big a big one is being sober minded. And yes. uh so w- like Amy said, we're not trying to push a drug or trying to get people high. Actually, the complete opposite, uh, mm-hmm. because if you take narcotics and stuff, you're, you're going to – what it was for me, I was so stoned out of my mind, I had no motivation for anything. I definitely wasn't sober-minded. And honestly, I feel like when I'm in chronic pain, you know, when I, when I have nothing to take care of that – I don't even feel I'm being sober-minded that, with that because now I don't think that it's a sin because I don't have any control over it. But but I don't I can't focus on on things as well. And uh, you know I mean if if this goes through I, I'm gonna have to figure something out or learn how to deal with it somehow. But uh, and I, I'm I'm sure that somehow I'll be able to to get through it. But I'd rather not. You know I'd I'd rather uh, stick with doing what 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 works. There's there's another article here that. Uh, is from uh, Fox 13, and there are parts of this that I just don't. To me, it, it, this seems slanted in a in in a certain direction, and you know, of course, we should expect that with certain news outlets. But because uh, some of this stuff, I, I've known I've known a lot of people on on Kratom, and I, I've never. I've never seen this. I'm not saying that it's outright lies, but I, I would I would be more willing to believe that maybe somebody had a bad allergic reaction or maybe something else was going on that that people didn't know about. But but th- this and the reason I'm bringing this article up is because th- this one uh, sort of has an answer to your question about because that, that was a question I had. You know what? What do we do if we have it after September 30th? Is it illegal? Like, can I buy a lot of it now and just mm-hmm. you know stock up? But um, Apparently, we're not allowed. We're not even going to be allowed to do that. It says here, uh, and th- this is uh, Fox 13, Salt Lake City. Uh, the federal government is banning an herbal supplement that some say has saved their lives, while others say the substance is ruining them. Kratom is sold online as well as at local smoke shops in a pill, powder, or liquid form. Some strains of the herbal supplement can mimic the effects of prescription painkillers, while others give energy like caffeine. At Genie's Smoke Shop in downtown Salt Lake City, customers have been able to buy Kratom for about a year. Uh, These are the most popular, said one worker, pointing to bottles filled with 60 pills. They sell for about a dollar a pill, and Genie's said they've built up a niche clientele. Businessmen, housewives, the employee said, it's just everyday people trying something new. Uh... And and again, th- th- this article kind of makes it seem like people are just taking it to get high. And I, like I said before, if there is anybody that's taking it for that, they are going to be really disappointed uh, yeah. when they actually take it. Because, yeah. I, I, and and if you take enough to even get any kind of buzz out, out of it, chances are you're going to have a stomach ache or you're going to need to lay oh. down and take a nap. Because I I've <laughs> a, I've accidentally taken too much. Yeah, <laughs> I've accidentally <laughs> taken too much before, and it's not fun. It's it, you get. Yeah. You know, just like anything else, if you were to take too much Tylenol, you'd get sick from it. But uh, it's not. It's it, it feel to me. It feels like a really intense car sickness. And uh, yes. but yeah, I, I've never thought that I had to go to the hospital over it. All all I did was I just took a nap and then I felt better. But um, yeah. <laughs> so th- this this article to me seems kind of slanted. But I mean, to each their own. You know, people have to read it and, and listen and make their own make up their own minds. But uh, but anyway, so they're they're. It, it sounds like they're trying to say that it's just people who want to get high, but that's not in my experience. That's not the case. Uh, I, but again, I'm sure some people do try right. that, but I, I just don't think they would continue because what 
what's the point? Uh, <laughs> workers at Genie's have heard the stories. Customers, they said, swear by the herbal supplement and not just for pain management. Some have told them stories of solving serious life problems. Heroin addiction, alcoholism, pain, sleep, they don't want to do opiates anymore. The employee listed off and it seems to help. On September 30th, the store will no longer be able to sell Kratom. The Drug Enforcement Administration announced Wednesday it is outlaw outlawing the herbal supplement. Doesn't matter if you bought it before or if you bought it after, it's going to be 100% illegal, Sergeant Todd Royce with the Utah Highway Patrol said. You'll pay the consequences for it. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're not told what the consequences are yet, so mm -hmm. you know who, who knows. But I, I imagine, it, since it's... Well, it says here the DA is placing Kratom on the same pedestal as big name Schedule One drugs like heroin, LSD, ecstasy, marijuana, and peyote. So I guess if you have it, you're going to have the same consequences as if you were in possession of heroin or something. Right. Uh, the DEA said in the announcement making Kratom a Schedule One drug that it is necessary to avoid an imminent hazard to the public safety. The DEA cites statistics from the CDC stating that calls to poison centers involving kratom jumped tenfold between 2010 and 2015 the cdc it said reported uh 660 calls in those five years so jumping tenfold that's six that's 60 calls you know uh reports of hepo hepatotech Toxicity, I'm probably saying that wrong. Psychosis, seizure, weight loss, insomnia, tachycardia, vomiting, poor concentration, hallucinations, and death associated with Kratom have uh, Kratom use have been documented, documented, the announcement says. It also points to a number of reported deaths associated with Kratom. And that, again, I, I have to, uh -oh. just with anything, people are going to be allergic to stuff. I mean, the, the yeah. thing that it... What's more telling to me is what the what what the report doesn't say. It doesn't say if it was an allergic reaction or if it was an overdose. It, it doesn't give any of that information. So to me, since it doesn't fit their cause to want to get this thing banned, I would I I would assume at least that at least some of those were allergic reactions or maybe there was something else going on there that that we don't know about. Um, but again, it doesn't say, so we don't know for sure. The announcement later states, these substances have a high potential for abuse, no currently accepted medical use in treatment in the United States, and a lack of accepted safety for use under medical supervision. Um, I w but again, I mean, you could say that about Tylenol or Advil. I was so excited, said a Salt Lake area mother who wanted to remain anonymous. She said the decision is a huge relief after her daughter became addicted to Kratom, her whole thing was, it's not illegal and there's nothing wrong with it, the mother explained. The woman said that at one point she called police when her daughter attacked her. She said the attack came after her daughter tried to quit using Kratom. For her, it was hard seeing this beautiful young girl turn into this violent young woman, she said. Uh, she said Kratom was the only thing on her daughter's mind, just like an addict of any other substance, but others have a completely different story. And I want to stop there and say this woman is anonymous. We have no idea. We can't vet this. We don't know if there is something else going on. The, the, for all we know, this girl could have been on other things and the mom might not have known. Or And there's just so many different, different things that it could have been. Um, and I just, just for my own personal experience and knowing people and... I've never heard of that, you know, but no. <laughs> obviously I don't know everybody. So, but anyway, I've been able to get back to work. I've been able to play with my children again, explained Rebecca Morris, who does website work for a couple of Kratom sites. She said Kratom has helped manage the pain she experiences from arthritis and severe burn scars. Morris said she knows many in the Kratom community who have recovered from addictions to heroin and prescription drugs because of Kratom. I feel like it's saving lives, she said. In the end, the DEA's announcement is giving hope to some but could prove devastating to others. The announcement states the placement on the list of Schedule One. Uh, drugs is temporary and will last for two years with a possible extension for a third year. The DEA said during that time it will pursue a permanent placement of Kratom on the Schedule 1 list. So even though they're saying it's temporary now, they're still going to pursue it being, yes. you know, permanent, yeah. which they're not accountable. To, you know, of course it's going to it's gonna be. So, um, so that's what we have to look forward to. But, uh, yeah, so even 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 the articles that sound slanted will even admit there are people benefiting. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people saying that this helps them, and it's not just people trying to to get high. Exactly. 
So, um, but yeah, so I, for, for those at home, that's, that's basically the gist of what's going on. And uh, again, we don't only ask you to sign this petition for our own benefit, but just for, for obviously for our benefit, but also for all of those out there who really do suffer from chronic pain, uh, people even worse that are suffering even worse than us who just, their their families are going to be ruined if they have to stop taking it because either they're going to have to deal with chronic pain and not be able to socialize at all with their family or they're going to have to get back on uh mm -hmm. narcotics or something that's way more damaging uh way more unhealthy i mean there are there just are there are no real health benefits except making you forget about the pain to things like oxycodone and stuff it trashes your liver your kidneys uh it, it, it can give you bleeding ulcers in your stomach it certainly did that to me um say, same with even tramadol or neurontin or any of these other like non-narcotic ish uh pain relieving drugs out there it, they they even have uh negative effects to them kratom the, the worst thing that I've ever had happen is I felt car sick for an hour, I took a nap, and I felt better. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I got a bad headache, and I said, okay, I don't like that strain, because I do notice that they would try to promote like uh, enhanced strains and things, and I think that's also what they try to sell in the head shops or the smoke shops is, you know, oh, we're going to get the oil and make it strong. But, you know, normal people like me and you are just looking for some relief. We're not trying to get high or feel enhanced. We just want the regular stuff and we take it for what it, you know, for what it is and that's it. So I'm just, yeah, we're going to have to definitely just watch this, pray and encourage everyone to please do your research and do what you can to get the word out. Yeah, amen. Share this video uh, if you're watching this and if you know somebody who, who's dealing with chronic pain or might benefit from this information, share this video around. You can even send it to your cro congressman or, or, or write your congressman. Write, write the people in your state legislative or, or at the government, at the uh, national government level. You know, write, write people, get the word out, uh, just pray. <laughs> Uh, if you're, yes. if if nothing else, pray and ask ask God that His will uh, be done over this situation. Well, Amy, I can't thank you enough for uh, taking time out of your day to have this conversation with me, and I, I really hope that this uh, this will reach people. If people are interested in following up with you and your work, uh, where where can they go? Um, they can go to um, facebook.com slash simply seeking truth, or they can find me on Facebook. My personal page is Amy Denise. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. And if people want to contact me, if you if you have a story of, of the benefits of Kratom or even harm, the harmful effects of Kratom, I'm not, just because I take it for, for chronic pain, I'm not a biased person like that. I, 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 I'm willing to hear both sides of the story. Mm -hmm. uh, you can email me at joshpeckdisclosure at gmail.com. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll be happy to read your emails, and uh, I, I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, also, leave a comment in the, the comment section below. I'm really hoping that, that somebody of importance that, that actually makes these decisions might come across this video, or maybe there's an, an honest person who wants to look at this from both sides who's, who is in a position to actually do something about it. So um, leave your comments below. Let, let us know. Let Amy and I know what you think about this situation if you've used it or even if you haven't and you just have an opinion about it we, we we'd love to hear your thoughts uh again in the comments below share this video around subscribe to my channel if you haven't already uh we'll be keeping up on this story um i'm gonna try to do some more interviews with other people uh but you know we'll 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 keep everybody posted uh so for uh for amy denise thank you for watching and as always take care and god bless Thanks.